which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just have one item. Uh, we've had a request to change uh, or to move item 310 up uh, ahead of 31 uh, to accommodate some uh, travel for the presenter here tonight. So we will accommodate that and um, make that change. Otherwise, that's all I have. Our city manager is out sick tonight, so we'll go to roll call. Mayor Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley? Here. Craig? Here. Alexander? Here. Iden? Here. Borzikowski? Here. Double? Here. Under the required public hearings, item 2.1 is the beneficial reuse management doing business as Gypsoil LLC. I'll declare the public hearing open and ask uh, uh, Myron to come forward. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Over the past couple of months, the Port Authority has been working with uh, Beneficial Reuse Management, uh, uh, a Chicago-based company, on their chip soil project. I first wanted to note a couple of things. On page two of your write-up, there, there is a, a typo there or, or a misspell. I, I referenced SciTech instead of Beneficial Reuse on page two of your write-up. I also have included in your... Uh, an amended resolution for your consideration. Uh, the changes proposed by legal counsel are highlighted in that resolution. Uh, GIP soil, just for your information, is a soil amendment used in agriculture. Its main benefits is to loosen soil, help soil retain water, and it helps with sedimentation runoff. So it uh, has several benefits. Uh, the facility proposed to be in Winona is uh, be located at 110 Harvester. The manufacturer would create about 20 jobs over the next two years and at very competitive wage rates, very much higher than what the state's minimum wage rates are, uh, are asking for. It is a roughly six and a half million dollar project, so they have quite an uh, investment in, in, in both Winona and and in Minnesota, most of their engineering, their equipment, and all things are Minnesota-based. So uh, uh, a lot of investment in, in, in both Winona and the state of Minnesota. Uh, they anticipated, if this moves forward, that the project would be, it would be operational in, in late fall of 2015. Uh, tonight, we're asking the city council to consider two actions to move the project forward. The first action would be the approval of the attached resolution, and that allows the Port Authority to proceed with the Minnesota Investment Fund application. This is an application much similar that we did with SciTech, if you recall, last year. It's the same type of an application to the Minnesota Investment Fund in the Department of Employment and Economic Development. Uh, the second is a simple resolution to approve a $140,000 loan from the Port Authority to beneficial reuse. That loan has been reviewed by the Port Loan Review Committee and the Port Board, and they are recommending uh, approval or to the City Council. In attendance tonight, we have Ron Thomas and Ron or Ryan Thomas and Ron Chamberlain from Beneficial Reuse, and they would have any they can answer any questions you might have of them. <coughs> and maybe if Ron and Ryan, if you could step up to the podium, if they. Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. I'm Ron Chamberlain with the Beneficial Reuse Management. My name is Indiana, and my telephone number is 317-402-8293. I don't know if that's turned on or if you just need to speak in. Oh, it's turned on. Okay. Ryan Thomas, Gyps Oil. Our uh, office is in uh, 372 uh, West Ontario Street, Chicago, Illinois. Phone number is 317-374-7470. Do you have a presentation you'd like to make or just no, to answer uh, questions? Uh, Myron asked us to be present to uh, uh, answer any questions that you may or may not have regarding the project, uh, regarding uh, FTEs, regarding um, our investment um, in the city of Winona and in the state of uh, Minnesota. So. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, we don't have anything formally prepared for you. All right, 
well, I have a question. I guess I, you know, my understanding that this, this material is not fly ash. How is this different than fly ash? I'll, uh, I'll go into that a little bit. <clears throat> when uh, coal is burned, uh, typically you'll see smoke coming from the, from the stacks. That is the ash. That is the fly ash. It's very light. It's very small particulate. It, the heavy metals that are in the coal are attached to it. And so when the coal is burned, uh, that ash is removed. It's removed with filter bags and electrostatic precipitators so that the clean gas downstream from that contains just sulfur dioxide, for example, or carbon dioxide, and the other types of greenhouse gases. At that point, then, uh, they spray a solution of high calcium limestone into that. The calcium limestone reacts with the sulfur dioxide, ultimately making gypsum. So gypsum is a co-product that's produced after the fly ash is removed from the, uh, from the food gases. And so that obviously when the fly ash is removed, the metals are removed with it, which is an important fact. Let me ask one more question before I let it turn over to council. What kind of dust is created in the, and would be created if you had this uh, operation here in Winona? <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, last week we did a, uh, a test run, if you will, um, with our mechanical partner, which is BPEX in the Twin Cities. And they were actually uh, a little bit surprised by the lack of dust production. They thought that their bag house uh, bags were not working, so they stopped the, uh, the trial and make sure that they were actually functioning, which they were. So to, to quantify it uh, correctly and to, to uh, substantiate what we're doing, um, we've hired uh, a couple different firms here, uh, actually in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, to uh, uh, analyze the equipment that we're using that's being produced by BPEX and to uh, uh, make an application to understand, I think they call it a determination of applicability, to determine whether or not we are going to need an air permit. Um, it, it's, it's our opinion and it's the manufacturer of the equipment's opinion that we, that we will not need an air permit, but we would rather cross that bridge now and find out if we do um, on the front end of the project rather than the middle. Primarily because air permits can be a little bit lengthy um, in the time that it takes to obtain it, so we would rather um, get a very firm answer to that now as opposed to later. Okay. Other questions? Pam? <coughs> I understand the gypsum, the raw material comes in by barge. Yes. Okay, and then you'll transport it uh, across the railroad tracks or around the end and, and get it to the, the facility. Correct. Uh, will those trucks be closed trucks or are they open trucks? They should be closed trucks. Um, uh, this process is very, um, uh, uh, very moisture sensitive. Mm -hmm. So when we bring in our material, um, from the from our uh, terminal at the port, they'll be in uh, in uh, closed triaxles or, or in dump semis. Um, they'll have tarps on the top, primarily because we don't want the fugitive dust emission, and also we don't want to subject it if it happens to be raining to any more moisture, because it can really throw off the process um, uh, when we try and produce pellets. Uh, so we're anticipating somewhere around seven or eight trucks a day uh, into the plant, uh, bringing in raw material, and then seven or eight trucks at the end of the day um, taking out finished products. I might add that the material coming in will be somewhere between 8 and probably 15 percent moisture, uh, which for agriculture is very important for not only handling but also for spreading the material. Uh, I might add that <clears throat> I began working with Gypsum and established the Gypsum brand uh, 14 years ago, and uh, it's very important that this moisture be right in order for it to work well in agriculture as far as application. So that's the type of material that we'll be bringing. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. I understand that, that this flue gas desulfurized uh, gypsum you know, comes from coal fired power plants. Uh, what do you project as the, the future of this as coal fired plants are sh more and more of them are shifting to natural gas? That's an excellent question. Um, the Electric Power Research Institute uh, is part of the American Coal Ash Association. Uh, they're predicting that the availability and quantity of FGD gypsum is actually going to continue to increase. Now the reason that is, obviously it's more uh, efficient in some cases to burn natural gas than, than coal, but uh, the, the coal 
coal-fired power plants that are coming out of production are those that are very old, very inefficient, and it just does not justify uh, adding that type of expense. It's several tens of millions of dollars to a billion dollars to do that. So typically, the plants that are coming out of production are the older ones, the smaller, uh, maybe 200 to 400 megawatt plants. Uh, however, today, we're continuing to have new plants built, and those are in the range of 3,000 megawatts. So we may be losing several plants from the total production, but uh, the actual output in wattage and the amount of gypsum being produced, they are predicting will continue to increase. So I might add as well that <coughs> they obviously are spread out uh, across much of the Midwest and the East, and somewhat in the West. Um, and so we, as a company, have established a regional distribution system that will allow us to bring material from existing plants, uh, great distances to Winona, for example, for this project. So you anticipate you'll be at this. You would be at this facility for more than than about five years. Absolutely, yes, yes. Um, I might add that <clears throat> there are actually two large markets for this material that are potential, and that is agriculture, but also turf and ornamental uh, within the United States. So there's a of demand that's, gro that's growing within the agricultural uh, business because it's important to have this material available to blend with other fertilizer materials in smaller quantities uh, using the equipment that's available within the communities today. Uh, and so the demand potential is there uh, and will be for the long term. Thank you. Sure. Um, I'm just wondering if you can explain a little bit about the runoff aspect of this. I know that in the state of Minnesota and the, the federal government is worried about the dead zone in the Gulf, and they're looking at states that live along riverways to have, you know, the sulfur and nitrate levels down. And I know most fertilizers cause this problem runoff on farms, so I'm wondering how this is comparable. Is it a better product? Is there some way that takes some of that sulfate out of the water as it runs back down into the valley? Excellent question. Well, <clears throat> the material will be will be uh, kept on, on property here where we're producing it. But once it's applied to the fields, it's a unique chemistry. It's calcium sulfate, and it, not to get into a lot of real de detail, but it's, it's a very reactive material. And fortunately, the sulfate uh, and calcium both can move down through the soil profile. There's a chemical reaction taking place with the soil that causes it to aggregate or come into little bundles so that water can move through. The calcium portion of this is also a very strong cation, and so it will uh, bind with soluble reactive phosphorus, which is that phosphorus that's creating the algae blooms. Primarily, phosphorus and nitrates are what create the algae blooms. So, gypsum, in fact, uh, is one that will reduce that. We, we have research going on now. We're showing a 62% reduction in concentration of soluble reactive phosphorus uh, using gypsum in that situation. So. <clears throat> as watersheds become more and more viable, as we see more and more need for uh, preventing that material, those materials from getting into the water, uh, the calcium sulfate will play a large role. So, uh, and as soil structure improves and the soil biology uh, is very, very efficient in this, like a good garden, for example, uh, they too will tend to bind and, and balance those nutrients. So, uh, it is, will play a large role. I might mention that the <clears throat> that the National uh, NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service, uh, is today uh, implementing, putting together a new conservation practice standard, a national standard for gypsum uh, to support farmers in using gypsum for improving soils, also for remediating uh, the, the, the phosphorus that's in the, in the environment, but also to reduce the problems in the offsite movement of manure uh, in agricultural applications. So there's several things that the federal government sees that gypsum is really helpful for because of the chemistry uh, that they want to promote that as a good conservation practice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you and your company for looking at Winona and then finally selecting Winona. Um, uh, Councilman Borzakowski and I represent the council on the Port Authority, so We've uh, been aware of this program through city staff and in our meetings uh, uh, from the last few years. I, I do have a question, though, about the process, and I'm glad you're here to explain it because I think, you know, uh, we've done our research, 
we've looked at your video, your company's video. There's been other uh, research out there that that you know says, hey, wait a minute, there's you know something going on here, but it's mainly focused on drywall made out of this particular product from the power plants, and that's something that that your company is not proposing to do at this place, at this site? That is correct. And we are proposing to bring the raw FGD, gypsum, mm -hmm. the flue gas desulfurization co-product here and uh, uh, pelletizing it for this purpose. Now, wall board is also calcium sulfate, gypsum, um, and it has many other ingredients in it, obviously, to make a wall board. Um, one of the things that can be problematic with FGD gypsum is if you put it in an anaerobic environment uh, where it's moist all the time and does not have oxygen, then the anaerobic bacteria begin to produce hydrogen sulfide, which creates the problems in that. Unfortunately, they had low-grade wallboard that was brought into the U.S. for cheap, and, and those problems ensued because of the environment that they put it in. So uh, the chemistry is calcium sulfate dihydrate, um, how you handle it and how you uh, deal with it determine what it will do in the environment. Very good. Uh, where is this product, uh, where do you anticipate distributing the product, uh, assuming everything goes forward here, uh, from the facility you'll be creating in Winona? Uh, right now we're anticipating uh, when we have two lines that are that will be able to produce gypsum or be able to produce pellets. Mm -hmm. uh, each line will produce around 34 to 35,000 tons a year. So in year one, the first full year of production, we should produce around 35,000 tons of, of uh, gypsum pellets. Uh, CHS uh, here in Winona has, um, we have not executed a contract with them to date, but they have expressed interest in taking all 35,000 tons um, basically as fast as we can produce it. Great. Um, and another question, um, how many new jobs would you be creating? Uh, each line uh, carries with it uh, 10 FTEs. So we'll be looking at when, when line one line one comes online, uh, it'll be immediately 10. Um, and then when line two comes on approximately six to nine months later, it'll be an additional 10. Uh, oh. so, so we're looking at 20 total. And what's the average wage paid to those employees? A range is fine. Uh, you know, it's been represented to us that the lowest wage would be a $15 cash wage with approximately $7 to $7.50 per hour in benefits. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the council? <coughs> Do you have similar plants uh, to, in other cities like what you're proposing here in Winona? We don't. Um, the... <clears throat> from a from a bulk gypsum standpoint, um, we market and sell bulk gypsum in 26, 21 states, 21 states. We're permitted in 26 we're, states. and we're permitted in 26 states. We have four or five other permits um, <laughs> pending that have not been approved yet. But so all in all, we're we're in and, and operating in some capacity in approximately 30 states. Um, pellets are. Uh, uh, a unique form of gypsum. There are only a couple other plants nationwide that do this, and this is the first one that we've done um, proposing here in Winona. Assuming that this one goes well, which we have every reason to believe that it will, um, we're going to replicate this process with three or four other plants uh, elsewhere, depending on what other market demands. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience wish to speak to this topic? State your name and address. Lynette Power, um, 252 East 8th Street. Um, <clears throat> I'm an artist. I use gypsum um, for mold making. I'm very familiar with gypsum. There's, this is um, natural gypsum that I have always used. The uh, gypsum that we're talking about tonight is a synthetic gypsum. And um, like they were saying, you know, like everybody's understanding this is being used for more and more things and trying to replace some of the mining. So in some places it's considered more green than natural gypsum. However, with all these, um, you know, the mercury and all the um, contaminants in it, uh, the lead, arsenic, and other heavy metals, um, there is um, there's other issues with that. And they did address that um, thing about the wall board, and um, I added, as they were saying, there's something about the bacteria or something. 
the, um, in the wall board, the hydrogen sulfide is one of the things that is the um, destructive thing that off gases from that wall board. And um, is it true then that, that your plant will not be, there will be none of that kind of hydrogen sulfide produced? I mean, as, as your, as your pile stockpiles off gas? <coughs> That's, that's true that it will. Um, we will be storing our material um, in, in an environment where it's not waterlogged. Again, like I mentioned before, uh, calcium sulfate, uh, when it comes in contact with the anaerobic environment, with the anaerobic bacteria that are within that environment, anaerobic meaning what? Means that they get their oxygen in a water environment. So if it's, um, uh, if it's a soil, let's say, a soil, that's waterlogged for a long, long time. You begin to smell swamp gas smells from that. That's hydrogen sulfide and other things coming on. The anaerobic bacteria need to have oxygen. The aerobic bacteria need to have oxygen. So the aerobic bacteria get theirs from the oxygen in the soil, in the environment. But when there is no oxygen, when it's waterlogged, then those stop the anaerobic bacteria's populations come up and they take their, their uh, oxygen from the compound, like sulfate, for example, will take the oxygen from the sulfate to live and create hydrogen sulfide, which is a gas, and it, it goes off. So hydrogen sulfide has to be produced by the anaerobic bacteria uh, in order for that to be an issue with the calcium sulfate. So your stockpiles will always be kept dry? Or Getting kind of a side conversation going on, and I, I think Lynette needs to address the council, and okay. maybe you could then answer some questions she raises uh, at the podium. I'm sorry. The thing about the the hydrogen sulfide is it's extremely corrosive. I mean, people who've had this in their houses, their their computers don't work, their their wiring doesn't work. It's it's um, what the what the um, Consumer Product Safety Commission advises homeowners who discover their houses contain toxic drywall to remove the drywall and replace fire safety equipment and many electrical components. So my big concern is, okay, we've got a little gem of our Marine Art Museum sitting right next to where this whole facility is gonna go. What is this gonna do? I mean, if there, if there are those kinds of off-gassing issues, which you know we need to be assured that that is not going to be any kind of off-gassing of that kind of corrosive materials in order to you know protect our neighborhood there. So that's one of my uh, one of my concerns. And then um, the other concern is that um, uh, about a year ago it came to my awareness that um, the um, rice is we're being advised that there is so much arsenic in the rice crops that um, we should be uh, cutting back on the consumption of uh, rice unless um, they're from organic sources. And some of this research um, I have looked into has, has pointed to fields that in the south where they are putting, fly, you know, I don't know if it's fly ash, I don't know if it's these gypsum products, uh, sewage sludge and things like that. So I just want to be assured that we also are looking at what kind of, um, we do not want to be um, having excess arsenic and uh, lead and mercury. And there also have been with this gypsum use on land has been high, um, higher concentrates of, I think it was mercury. Um, so I'm just, I'm just really concerned that we look at that carefully. Now all the, it looks kind of like a lot of the information that we've gotten here to make this decision is coming from the industry. We have a fantastic scientific community here in our, um, in our Winona, and with the two universities and their environmental studies, and then there's a, there's a lot of scientific people in town that we could get second opinions from. And just, there's also some fantastic resources up in St. Paul, Minneapolis, that um, are working with watersheds and uh, farm practices, as well as the land stewardship people. 
And I just would like to just not move this thing forward really quickly, but consult with some of those people and make sure that we are not going to be um, promoting the use of something on our lands that is going to be detrimental in the long run. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? that we're using today from mines uh, comes from the ground and it has uh, many, many impurities, things that are not calcium sulfate. Uh, it runs anywhere from 85% to maybe 90% pure. Uh, and so there are a lot of things in that gypsum beyond besides calcium sulfate. And unfortunately, there are also metals are some of those components. Um, the FTD gypsum we're speaking of runs 90 to 98% pure. Uh, Fortunately, the, the uh, ash that contains the metals attached to it is removed prior to the gypsum's production. So, uh, it, gypsum is a regulated product. We, it's, it has to be permitted in each state, uh, like many things. And in, in most of the states, we're required to take analytical tests, uh, some monthly, some quarterly, uh, some states it's annually. So since 2006, when I began first using gypsum, FGD gypsum, we have hundreds and hundreds of analyticals to show us what is in it. And essentially, compared to the EPA uh, allowable amounts of these Richter metals, uh, eight, the eight most concerning metals, uh, they're either non-detectable in the FGD gypsum, or they're at one to four percent of what's allowed. So. Many times, there's less metal content in this than there actually is in the mine material. Also, um, we're working with a, a gentleman by the name of Tim, Tim Hagen with the University of Minnesota uh, in preparing for this pelletizing product. Uh, the, the process that we're using is, is some of his work. And uh, so we are involved with uh, the state university with the material. Uh, so the metals are not there. Uh, the hydrogen sulfide, again, is also not there uh, until it is put in the wrong kind of an environment and it's created by a chemical reaction. I wanted to address the moisture issue. Um, when gypsum carries with it a, a 8 to 12 percent moisture, which is what we indicated that we would prefer uh, when it comes into our facility, 8 to 12 percent, you, if you had a pile of it sitting here, you, you couldn't make a snowball out of it just to give you a frame of reference on 8 to 12% is not very moist. Um, so to, with regard to how we're going to store the material, once we bring the material over from the port to our facility, um, there is a three-sided area to the area that we're going to lease that we're going to end up closing in so that we'll have it 100% enclosed all the time. We like to protect um, the asset that we have in the form of the gypsum and control that moisture content because if it gets upwards of 20, 22, 25%, but when we bring it inside, we have to heat it and bring that moisture content back down in order to produce the pellets that we're trying to produce. So that's an extremely important uh, issue to us uh, as far as the moisture content, which is why we've elected to close off that extra building and make sure that when we bring in three, four, five thousand 5,000 tons at a time, that it can be contained completely. You say this material is regulated. Is, do they regulate the amount of this material that the farmers put on their land? Most states do, yes. We, uh, when we apply for a permit, uh, some states have a, a level of maximum amount that you can apply. Um, we, uh, in, in all of our permits, we state the amount that we want to apply based off of the agronomic need for the field. But typically, uh, in most states, the maximum amount that can be applied is three tons per acre, similar to a limestone material. And that's in the case of where we are removing sodium from sodic soils. Uh, most of our usage uh, with the bulk material is somewhere around 2,000 pounds. <coughs> now the pelletized material that we're speaking of here, uh, the use rate of it will be significantly lower than that just simply because the cost per, per unit is significantly higher. Uh, it will primar primarily be being used as a sulfur source, a calcium source, nutrient source, uh, as a pellet. Uh, the bulk source that we're using is going to change source 
transportable <coughs> structure to amend soils, and that's at a much higher rate. So, like I said, the destination of this material will be at a much lower rate per acre. Um, the metals concentrations, again, are either non-detectable or they're at the low end of the allowable amount by the EPA. And the hydrogen sulfide production will not happen unless this is put into an anaerobic environment. An anaerobic environment would be one that if we put gypsum in that pitcher there and fill it up with water so that all the gypsum was under water, that's an anaerobic environment. And obviously we're not going to allow that to happen. Does Minnesota, is Minnesota one of those states that regulates it? Yes. The, the federal EPA requires the states to have some sort of a regulation uh, permitting process, either to be exempted or to be permitted at certain levels. So the states choose their own criteria and so on for Obviously, that's the first thing we do when we want to sell gypsum in the state is to get the permit in place. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I guess not. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that wishes to speak? Anybody else wish to speak? Last chance. Anybody else wish to speak? Hearing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Council, if there's one that is approved, uh, there's two for the recommendation, two resolutions, I believe. Yeah. Do the motions need to be made separately, or can we do them together? Uh, just to clarify, the first item for the MIF application is a resolution. It's the revised resolution that we distributed. The second action would be a motion to approve the port loan of $140,000. You want them separately? Uh, together is fine. Okay. I'll move approval of both. Okay. I, I'd second. Motion by Paul and seconded by Michelle. Any further discussion? George? Yeah, just uh, in mention, I think what Ms. Powers brought up as far as, you know, questions and concerns with it, I think they were <coughs> answered, I think relatively uh, uh, well documented by the, uh, the people from Gypsoil and dealing with them through the Port Authority. They're, uh, uh, they're a good company and uh, I think uh, everything from here will go forward. And if anything ever does come up while the process is going during your business, I know I'm certain that you will uh, address whatever concern would come along the way, correct? Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Under the petitions, requests, and communications, we are moving to item 3.10. This is a request for the Winona International and Sprint Triathlon, known as Trinona. <coughs> and the council was, and uh, media, I believe, were emailed additional maps to go along with that agreement. I move to approve the license agreement. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Jerry. Any discussion? It's a great event. Mm -hmm. We appreciate all the people you bring to our community for it. So thank you. We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Have a good drive home. And now we will move back to item 3.1, a reappointment to the Board of Adjustment of David Kuba. Okay. Move to approve that appointment. Second. Motion by George, second by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor? Aye. The motion say aye. 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 <laughs> Here is, we have one enthusiastic <laughs> council. <Yeah. laughs> item 3.2, appointment to the Heritage Preservation Commission of Susan Briggs. I would move to confirm the appointment. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Any other discussion? Hearing none. I know uh, Susan has served in the past and uh, will be a good member again. So, um, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item 3.3, .3, request for St. Martin's Strawberry Festival in Sinclair Park on Sunday, June 14th. I move to approve that request. Second. Moved by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? Yeah. Uh, just a comment, it's a great event. Uh, certainly I support this again and uh, hope everybody attends. Uh, my grandchildren had a great time last year. Mm -hmm. Hope for good weather. Yep. 
All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. Item 3.4, request by Winona Health to close Parks Avenue for their Scrubs Camp on Thursday, June 25th. Move to approve that request. Second that. Motion by George, seconded by Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.5, a request by Winona Health for their race to summer 5K event on Saturday, May 16th. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? None. We'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Item 3.6 is a request for the Winona Main Street Touch a Truck and Play Streets events on Saturday, May 16th. And David Bittner is here if you have questions. I'd move to approve the request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? Great event. Uh, very successful last year. If nothing else, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.7 is a request for Winona Senior High School's Global Trot on Saturday, May 9th. Move to approve that request. I'll second. Motion by George, second by Al. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.8 is a request for the Hiawatha Valley Mental Health Center 5K signage at Lake Park and Central uh, Park. Motion by Pam. Seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.9 is a request for a handicap stall at the Winona State Retirement Center at 227 West Wabasha. Move to introduce the attached ordinance. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Carries. Under new business, item 5.1 is the MPCA grant opportunity for a rain garden demonstration project at the parking lot at 110 Johnson Street. I'd move. Um, the resolution to authorize applying for the funds. I'll second that. Motion by Michelle, second by Pam. One question. Uh, Do we lose any parking space? No, I don't believe so. No, we would not lose any parking spaces. The, the, there's sufficient room in there to put a rain car okay. kind of between the roads. First thing, I think it's a great project, and I'd like to see, encourage more of this sort of thing. I'm glad that. Uh, uh, the co-op is willing to take this on and apply and um, and maintain it if successful. So. Uh, I have a question yeah. about it. Um, where in the parking lot would it be? I don't see any outline on our graphic here in our packet. Yeah, basically, as you, as you look in the packet where you see the cars parking facing one another, we would just open up open up that space between those cars that are facing one another and it would be down the middle of that lot. Oh, so it's not a square, but it's more of a long, elongated rectangle, a long rectangle. in the middle yes. of it. Okay. And what do you mean by uh, regrading and resurfacing? Well, basically what what's required is, is they would have to regrade that lot to direct the storm waters to the, to the rain garden. Is, I'm sure if you've seen the the water standing in that parking lot in the past. It, it's its certainly an issue both by standing water and okay. ice build up really in that lot. So, uh, and it does end up, I think, in the basement of the club as well. So there's a lot of, there's kind of ongoing water issues with regard to that. Mm -hmm. That's a large impervious surface there. Would this affect snow plowing at all? Uh, not to my knowledge. I, shaking his head no. <laughs> so, okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Other questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Carries. Item 5.2 is a contract with the City of Winona Professional Employees Association. This would be for a 2.5% wage increase effective January 1st. I'll move approval. 
Second by Paul, seconded by George. Discussion? Hearing none. Oh, George. Yeah, uh, two and a half. Were our other ones, we just did, that's two and a half, or is that two? Yeah. All two and a half, okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.3, requesting support for dedicated state funding for city streets. I would move to approve the attached resolution. Second. Motion by George, second by Paul. Any discussion? Michelle? The, can someone answer how we would be recommending they find the funding? Are we encouraging them? It said tolls, but I'm not really sure what that means. Is this just asking them to consider additional funding for city streets, or are we actually encouraging them to tax us to get the additional money? I'm trying to understand where the money's coming from. Anybody know? <laughs> okay. I see the duty. Okay. I think right now this part of it is the fact that they have a, uh, a surplus, and, and they're trying to send it in different directions, and it's kind of to look at streets as a priority, as opposed to some other I possible believe, uses. I believe you're right about that. So. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Any other other questions that can or can't be answered? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to improve more streets. Yeah. I just, I, the way it's written, it sounds like we want to put a toll on our local streets, and yeah. I just am not in favor of that, no, so. No. Okay. If there aren't any other questions, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, uh, oppose, same sign. Carries. Item 5.4, future of Lake Park softball fields. Councilman Craig. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councilman Borzikowski and I requested this just really, uh, we don't have any specific plans, but it's really to officially get it on the agenda. Um, since Winona State withdrew their plans, that evening there was suggestion and pretty much consensus all the way across about, you know, okay staff, let's come back with something. And then uh, another time during council concerns, I think two or three people had suggested. There has been suggestions, and since it's spring is just around the corner and people are starting to talk about things like that, both of us and I'm sure a lot of the rest of you have been getting some questions about it. So. Chatting with the uh, city manager, we just thought let's put it on the agenda so it's officially out there. I do understand that staff is working on some ideas. So what the plan is, we don't have any specifics yet, but staff is going to be looking is looking at it. And as my understanding, staff will be coming back to us with um, suggestions on what to do with the existing parks, how to get them up to speed, uh, repairing them, kind of, and uh, what the cost will be, et cetera, et cetera. So tonight was nothing more than just letting the public know that things are being looked at and um, things will be brought back to us to decide on what's going to take place with those parks. If we want to recall all the discussion around the Winona State concept, the one thing that the vast majority of people agreed upon is the existing ball diamonds that repair needs to be done to them. So that's all we're doing is going to be working on what everyone or the vast majority of people agreed upon. So that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, like I say, I pretty much agree. Uh, Jerry pretty much summed everything up. And, you know, the players are asking that there's money that they've been paying for years and the sponsors in the softball development fund. Uh, the time has come now to look at those fields, see the future, see if we even need all four fields uh, that they're looking at as far as uh, renovation to, uh, you know, get something done with it. They want to start seeing money spent uh, on those fields. So. Well, I don't want uh, people to go, we're not talking about reduction of fields, no, no, no. Um, but uh, let's just get that out there. I think we need all the fields that we have, but still, we're just requesting a staff. Instead of up to this point, it's been suggestions, but now that the big plan is off the table, let's come back with a plan that we can work on with a timeline and with a price tag. So then once staff comes up with some general ideas, then we then... Uh, can have the discussion with the constituents and then put our input into it so we can finally get something concrete. Okay. okay. Anybody else wish to speak? All right. We'll bring this topic up again at another time. Moving on to item 5.5, .5, it's the BK final plat. I would uh, move the attached resolution 
to be introduced for adoption. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 7.1 is council concerns. We'll start with uh, Al. Um, just extending, I'm sure, the council's sympathy and, and uh, those of the community to Mayor Peterson on the passing of um, his mother in Mankato. That's Thank all you. I have. Jerry? Ditto. Michelle? Paul? I, I would also agree with that. I had an opportunity last week uh, to uh, hit, there was a Seven Rivers, I had a um, set, meeting on uh, economic growth in the area uh, in La Crosse, and uh, one of the highlights of that meeting was to basically say there's a lot of river communities, including La Crosse, uh, who are having uh, similar situations with aging population. I think in some cases, uh, they looked at within the next five years, 50% of, of certain companies' entire workforce would be retiring. Um, and uh, I think probably of the uh, uh, most important thing was out of there, the Dubuque, Iowa had a similar situation, and they had an extra excellent model that they presented. And, um, um, and I think that uh, we should clearly look at um, replicating what uh, Dubuque did. Um, it's a good strategy for, to, to solve the problem. Um, and, um, and it seems to be very cost effective in what they're doing. And it's a, a multi-level where they identify people who might want to relocate to the area. They make sure that those people uh, have an, an understanding of the benefits of the area, what it has to offer them. And, um, and also they recognize the fact that they had probably one of the, I think the oldest population in Iowa from an age standpoint. So. So it, uh, it clearly highlighted those facts and, and was an excellent uh, uh, seminar. Thank you. Pam? Nothing. Thank you. George? Uh, condolences to uh, your thank family you. and the passing. She appeared to be a very wonderful lady from hearing stories that you were telling us. So uh, This past week, uh, the mayor and the press, we talked about, or they talked about, you know, the blockage of the railroad crossings preferably Mankato and uh, uh, Louisa Street, different areas in town too. And I appreciate that very much. People are talking about that. But I'd also I'd like to see, uh, I've left Judy a message, and of course I say her being ill, she was unable to return it, is I would like to see a resolution, if that's the right word to use, to come to the council where the council simply addresses block crossings and send it to the railroad. I know we have sent some things to them and to MnDOT, but to just simply address the block crossings. And what I mean by block crossings, not those that are barricaded and closed off, just to train crossings where uh, the railroad themselves are taking up uh, multiple, uh, multiple time in order to uh, you know, do their switching. Uh, today I know it was blocked for about 40 minutes again. There was traffic all the way backed up damn near to Broadway. So uh, it is an issue, and I know, like I say, during, during last fall's campaign, I know I addressed it, as did uh, many other candidates addressed it, and I know next year, in next year's election, I'm sure it's gonna be a front-running issue, will be coming up again, so. Uh, thank you for the help on that. As we know, our snowmobilers Every year, we tend to have many accidents where people are seriously hurt, if not killed. And I would like to congratulate former Winona, former retired Winona Fire Captain Kim Bartleson on being named the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Snowmobile Safety Instructor for the year. Uh, a great honor. Kim, with his training as a firefighter, I know he, would, you know, he put on very, very good classes with this bringing out what to expect and how we can operate them safely in honor very, very much deserving to Kim. Now I'd like to send out congratulations to Al and Peggy Joswick on celebrating 40 years of marriage. Time really flies. And I'd like to send out good wishes of good health to Frank Draskowski and Sylvia Palbicki.
thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm still reading those Polish names, still. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that one you shouldn't have any problem right. with. <laughs> Under the consent agenda, there are two items. Approval of the minutes from the February 17th agenda and a final adoption of an ordinance to declare a parcel on Lake Boulevard as surplus property. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Jerry. Any discussion? Hearing none. We'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Carries. I move we adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We're adjourned.